So I'm sitting here at Ignite, second try, <laughs> with some fellow MVPs. We have a lot of fun, but honestly, we want to talk about our Ignite experience yeah. and uh, a little bit about the great stuff that uh, is now available in Windows Server 2016. Um, this is Charbel Nam Nam Nam. Charbel Nam Nam. I always get it wrong. Didier van Hooye. Everybody knows you. We had, really? we have done Hi. so many, <laughs> so many videos, and we have a new guest. It's Philip Elder from Canada. So um, the, the other guys are Hyper V MVPs. You are a cluster MVP, right? Yes. Yes, that's correct. High availability. And uh, which things you are doing most in the last time? I I know you do a lot of storage. Yes, we do scale-out file server uh, storage for uh, Hyper-V cluster front ends. And how was your Ignite experience? It was really good, worth it, definitely. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, a feature you would is your favorite feature in Windows Server 2016 clustering or something else? What is what would you pick? Storage spaces direct. Okay, I have to ask you, what is storage spaces direct for our viewers? Storage Spaces Direct is basically something some other vendors have been doing for a little while now, a hyper-converged compli uh, appliance. Not com well, it can be compliant, too, uh, as far as uh, having Hyper-V and storage running on the same platform. It can start at two nodes and scale all the way out to 16. So what's new, and uh, they announced that at Ignite is a two-node cluster, right? Yeah, that's correct. So uh, do you see a use case for a two-node scenario? Yes, we do. There was uh, a pilot on the floor by the name of Kepler 47, oh, right. and uh, it's a small box. The t combined total cost of the two boxes were just under $2,000 or just a little over $2,000. Uh, that's a pretty awesome little high availability solution for small offices. Uh, and I did a video with uh, with Microsoft about it. I was so amazed about this stuff. So really cool for small business, maybe. Yeah. Definitely. Um, another feature you would say is uh, is one of your favorites. Uh, the next feature would be shielded VMs. I'm thinking that the opportunity for us both in the space we're in, we are in our primary vertical is accounting firms. So there's a very great sensitivity as far as data is concerned and uh, the ability to create a shielded VM, so essentially encrypt everything from start to finish, hand the keys over to the client, and away we go. I think in this day and age of great sensitivity towards data, whether it's in the public cloud or private or hybrid, is a very important feature. Yeah, okay. So thank you, Philip. So uh, to my <laughs> left, from the camera to my right, is uh, Shabal. Yes. Shabu, how was your uh, Ignite experience? Ignite, uh, actually this is the first time I attended Ignite. Uh, I was amazed uh, attendees, how many attendees, I believe around 20,000 people. Yeah. Experience was great. The organization for all um, the events was really uh, surprised me to, to be able to serve this large amount of people. Not to mention as well the wireless. We have at least Every, every user has at least two devices. We are talking about 50,000 devices at, at least, at least yeah. connecting Wi-Fi. Well, Wi-Fi was great. It was really great. Yes, I was downloading yes. Windows Server. 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 Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was really great. Yes, this was a good experience. My neighbor was not so amazed about <laughs> <laughs> Because you took all the bandwidth. <laughs> we will talk about that later. Okay. Yeah. So, Shambo, for you, uh, one feature or maybe two you would pick uh, that are now available. Yes. Uh, as we know, just when the server just released a couple of days before, and I've had to choose a um, couple of features, a lot of features is difficult to choose from, but um, PowerShell Direct is really a very cool feature in, in, for Hyper V 2016, and uh, just got uh, an update as well, especially for um, private cloud deployments where uh, you can restrict the amount, not get access full amount for the guests. So this is really using just enough ad administration or GA. GEA. <laughs> GIA. Yes, so this is really uh, helpful to, in order to get uh, the, the host uh, tenant get uh, last uh, network access to the virtual machine so he can guarantee they can give access to the, to the hoster 
to access the guest without uh, with minimal minimum privilege possible. So they don't have to be an administrator on the exactly. box. They only need, for example, access to to do something with the network. Exactly. Most of the time, the network is lost, and then you you can do it via PowerShell Direct. And for example, the service restart the service that is getting stopped also, so they can get just enough uh, privilege to do this certain task. So I use PowerShell Direct uh, a lot in building up virtual machines and installing software. It's really great. But, uh, do you have another favorite? Yes, this is just released as well, uh, announced um, during Ignite, uh, the key storage drive for Generation 1 virtual machine. As uh, my fellow MVP, Philip, uh, mentioned, shielded virtual machine for Generation 2 VMs. Yeah. KSD uh, works uh, similar to shielded VM. It's required the same infrastructure as shielded VM uh, because we, some people are still using generation 1 VM and uh, for some reason the application cannot upgrade uh, for a newer OS. Mm -hmm. So we still have 20, 2008, 2008 R2 deployed. Even 2016 will work in a, in a generation, generation 1, one exactly. Machine. But I believe all people are going now to generation 2 VMs uh, with the new OS. Yeah. So uh, key storage drive give the same uh, security to encrypt the disks. Yeah. Right, mentioned is not the same as uh, same measurement security as shielded VM because once booting there is no virtual TPM yeah. to uh, have secure boot as the generation two. But uh, we make sure the data disk for the VHDX for the VM is um, encrypted with BitLocker, and uh, no one can access uh, yeah. the data. And the key disk is for the encryption key, right, to store it there. Yeah, so you add um, an IDE, the uh, disk drive yeah. is 48, 42 megabyte uh, of the file size. Why is 42? Because um, uh, uh, the minimum uh, between, because you can have it in NTFS, FAT32, XFAT, so the, those very various uh, file systems, uh, the minimum one is 42 megabyte. So you can add a uh, key storage drive under IDE dev device, and then you can store this key on this uh, drive, and then you can enable with locker feature and encrypt the disk in, in the guest. So that's really cool. Um, I will come to my neighbor to the left oh. from the camera. <laughs> so Didier, um, how was uh, the Ignite experience for you? Uh, very good. Uh, I enjoyed the sessions, but I, but I also enjoyed the, the chats and the talks, the sit-downs we had with various uh, partners from Microsoft. We had program managers at Microsoft, uh, they, they really took the time to talk to us. We could sit down, discuss some questions, some concerns, mm -hmm. some hopes and some uh, ambitions we have with uh, 2016. So all in all, it was a very informative, very educational uh, Ignite. Yeah. I must admit, when, when I were at the keynote, um, there was a lot of cloud stuff going on there was a lot of security stuff uh, uh, in the keynote uh, i missed a little bit of my favorite stuff like windows server clustering there was a little announcement yes. about they are ready uh, so i feared maybe the conference will be focused on all the cloudy things but uh, there were enough for us infrastructure guys right sure uh, of course the, the technology world is getting very diverse and rich so the era where you could talk an, o an entire week just about SQL Server and Windows Server is gone. <laughs> that, that, yeah, so <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a tremendous amount of uh, technology and skill sets that have to be covered. And it's very clear that we, more than ever, we'll have to start working together and communicating with a lot of other people to get the entire solution deployed and uh, operated. Yeah. So. When I ask you for your two features, you would say are um, are your most favorite? Not my most favorite, perhaps, but very important and things that make me very happy. Uh, it's not very sexy, but I think that in 2016, Hyper-V has finally taken the, the big leap to make backup truly scalable and uh, Resilience, so that's something I'm, I'm really happy to see because even even when you have the high performance, high 
high capacity, high, high cap highly capable environment, you still have to back it up, and then things become a little less charming sometimes, or at least complicated and expensive, time consuming. And now we have this opportunity to, to make that also scale, be reliable, and highly performant. And uh, change block tracking, resilient change tracking, the modified region tracking file, uh, it's looking pretty good, and I think they have a uh, one of the top spots in the industry at the moment with change block tracking that can be leveraged by all the backup vendors. Yeah. Uh, and I have great hopes for the quality of the change block tracking because uh, they basically they'll need it for Azure. That's why they build it. As, uh, they need it as well. So they, they are their own customer. And at that scale, for those needs, I think the quality assurance on that feature should be better than anybody competing with them. Yeah. That's true, and I'm also looking forward to not having other kernel mode drivers in, in, in the kernel from other vendors. But there is another feature you maybe want to talk about, DDA. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so DDA is going to talk about DDA, and DDA is discrete device assignment. It's a cool, nifty piece of technology I started playing with because, well, we have some people who can be quite demanding, and if they ask for a technology solution that geeks love, well, that's a win-win situation, right? So I started playing with uh, assigning uh, GPUs directly to the virtual machine, and I had a lot of fun doing that and great results. And then, of course, then I started adding NVMe disks to a virtual machine. And, well, uh, actually, you can, as long as it's supported, it's maybe not supported by Microsoft, but as long as, long as it works, you can have fun. You can get a, you can add a wireless car to a virtual machine if you want to. So I could imagine for a developer, for example, who wants to test uh, software he's writing against a uh, uh, wireless uh, card, that now he can do that even in a VM. So it's, there's all kinds of fu funky, but also very realistic and uh, solutions you can build for engineering teams that need AutoCAD. Uh, combine that with the fact that you. Uh, uh, also have remote FX being enhanced with uh, OpenGL support, larger memory. Uh, in terms of uh, VDI scenarios with dedicated uh, desktops or virtual machines, we're heading in the right direction, yeah. So I will give you the microphone now, oh. because I want to do my two features. I'll say, so we have a Ford MVP uh, <laughs> sitting to, to my physical left and to the right of the camera. And that's our host, actually. It's uh, Carsten Rachfall from Germany, who we all know so well from the Hyper-V Amigo show. Yes, so, from the MVP Summit, yeah. right? So, and from the MVP <laughs> Summit. And before you head off to Redmond once again, I was wondering, uh, wh how did Ignite work for you? Um, I, I said it already. I was a, a little bit concerned when I was in the keynote uh, about the amount of uh, stuff I care about in the moment would be presented here at the show, but uh, we, we had some amazing sessions about Hyper-V. Ben Armstrong was really great and uh, clustering uh, was there, um, storage spaces direct, wonderful stuff. And uh, then we uh, had an, a session with NetPile or, or more of them. And uh, I'm satisfied that, that the things I care about, about most are still there. You get the impression with all the cloud stuff going on, uh, uh, our stuff is not so important anymore, but uh, I'm satisfied. I'm, I, I think it was quite a good show. Uh, Shambo mentioned yes. already to feed more than 20,000 people is quite challenging. Wi-Fi was great, so I'm, it's my second Ignite, and it, it was good. It was very good. I'm a bit worried now because you've mentioned NetPile and none of us have actually mentioned uh, storage replica as a favorite feature. So Net, if you're watching this, this was entirely unintentional. Uh, Don't apologize. You have to choose when you have two, two features. But I didn't announce my second feature yet. So I didn't even have I'm, this, this is a hint, Karsten. This is what they call a hint. So... Um, uh, storage replica is great, but my absolute favorite feature is nested virtualization, and I love it deeply because um, it solves a, a lot of problems for me, uh, being on the road all the time and playing around with this cool stuff. I can do it now on my notebook. I can set up in Hyper-V or on my notebook, running Hyper-V, another hypervisor, and having VMs in, it, in that, and that's so great for playing around with the stuff. Even 
storage space is direct, it works with nested virtualization, so you don't have to buy a, let's say, 50,000 uh, euro rack, you can do it in virtualization and uh, have some fun with it, ex have experienced it and uh, tested and so on. So really great and they did really a good job in how, how much performance is, it, its costs. So it's around 20 to 25 percent and that's really good for a nested thing and I learned from some other MVPs even another hypervisor works in it. It's maybe not supported but you can play with another hypervisor sure. in, in, in nested virtualization. So and the other feature I know I, I, you will uh, not agree, but I think uh, it's very great that Hyper-V is now, and Windows Server is now, the operating system and the hypervisor who supports the biggest environments. Yeah. So we can now have a 24 terabyte host with 24 terabyte of memory with 512 logical processors, and if you need big VMs, you can have a 12 terabyte virtual machine, 12 terabyte of RAM and 240, uh, let's say, processors or core, how you want to put it, or lo logical processors. Uh, and most customers don't have the need for such large machines. But uh, I think it's great that Microsoft is supporting these numbers because we know there are people out there that will use Windows Server 2016 in 10 years. Yeah. Even longer, maybe. It will be supported for 10 years, and you never know. Maybe then uh, big machines, maybe 6 terabyte or so, are not are, are common. Yeah? And uh, uh, I learned from Ben Armstrong, he said in the session, in Azure, there's a need for big machines. So you can rent a machine for some months and do some crazy things in it. So this is, this is one of my favorites, and of course, storage replica, uh, net, Great feature. It didn't make it to our eight best features, but it's it's the third feature of everyone, I would exactly. say. Uh, yeah, and I think all, all, all the effort on scalability, if you combine that with the IOPS and the low latency, you can get from storage spaces direct, the network throughput with uh, SMB direct, I mean, they're just taking every physical limitation of the, of the, of, of, from the table, right? Yeah. The discussion is about what you're going to do with the, with the application, with the service. It's not being worried about the fact that, that you can have enough memory or enough IOPS. They're just throwing it at you. It's, it's amazing to see. Amazing. Yeah. And there were a lot of security enhancements. But we, we, we agreed to only do two features, yes. 20 minutes. And so thank you, everyone, uh, for being here. And I think, all in all, great show, great nice. features. Famous last words? You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.